Uh, well, I'm joined now by Linda Yu from Oxford University. Uh, so, Linda, the yuan dropped at its fastest pace in almost two years last week. I mean, it seems to really emphasize that Beijing is the one that is still in control of its currency. Very much so. I think there's always going to be quite a lot of volatility around the movement of the Chinese yuan because the Chinese certainly are still intervening to keep it within a pretty tight peg. And the reason why it would fall in value is because this depegging from the dollar repegs it to its major trading partner, which is the European Union. And the euro has been quite volatile. But this is not going to appease critics in the U.S. Congress who believe that their record trade deficit um, in, uh, I should say, in 18 months, the highs they've had, is mirrored in China's trade surplus, which is also at an 18-month high, and they certainly see the relationship between the currency and the trade position. Now, this also comes at a time when China has cut its holdings in U.S. debt by the most ever. Just how much do we read into this? An act of defiance on China's part? I don't think we should read that much into it. <laughs> I think the reality is when you look at the yields on U.S. Treasuries, they're pretty small once you take into account uh, the expenditure that China's doing. China spends around $3 billion every two days actually buying up uh, U.S. Treasuries and Euro bonds and others. And in fact, that's actually what's been happening. This pegged currency means the Chinese central bank is continuing to spend money, printing money to buy Treasuries and other instruments to keep its exchange rate stable. But because, again, the depegging means it's also now going to buy more Euro bonds and also Japanese JGB. So this is government so bonds in Japan. Like Absolutely. Say. And there's very few things to diversify into. So they're not buying treasuries as much. But remember, they hold more than $800 billion. So this is not diversity. Uh, this is not selling off treasuries sure. either. So what you're saying is it doesn't represent any change in, in long-term strategy for China. But as we were hearing in some, in some other developments, a recent Pentagon report suggesting China is pursuing military capability in areas which the U.S. is also seeking to extend its influence. How do you how would you describe the economic and political dynamics between these two countries right now? It's increasingly tense. I think China's uh, strategy around its uh, home area, it would consider the South China Sea, is maintaining territory in an area where there's a lot of disputed, owners, disputed ownership of islands. But China has what's called a string of pearl strategy, which extends from the South China Sea actually all the way to the Persian Gulf. And for them, it's about securing supply lines for transport and for commodities. The Americans, of course, see this as a vying for influence. So I think politically there's a lot of tension between the two countries, but they are the two main engines of growth now that China's overtaken Japan as the world's second biggest economy. So they're going to have to, I think, have a better way of resolving these tensions rather than military buildup. I mean, very briefly, Linda, I mean, you talk about tension between these two countries, and we are seeing tension on several fronts now. Of course, we've got military maneuvers by the U.S. in Asia. Uh, we have concerns about China's influence in the region, and of course, you know, China's trade surplus and the yuan. So, you know, you U.S.-China imbalance is still very much uh, going to be an obstacle. It is. Say. And let's add one more tension to that, which is China's restricting exports of rare earth minerals. And this is the stuff that goes into high-tech hybrid engines. Now, there are a lot of American companies are very unhappy about this because this means that prices are going up for something which is crucial for everything from electric cars to iPods. So, and the Chinese, of course, view this as another way of gaining uh, technology for their own uh, you know, growth. So therefore, I think there's a lot more to come. Linda Yu, thanks so much.